Hey guys, Ike here from Mike'sOutdoors.com. I'm here today to talk to you about what to do with wild game meat when it's hot outside. Okay, so what I'm talking about here, and I say wild game because what I'm specifically talking about is deer and wild hogs because that's what I have the most experience with. Um, here in Missouri, deer season opens up in September and it can still be pretty hot. And when we go on our hog hunts, it's generally, we try to go in the spring. Um, but it can be in the 80s and, and something like that during the, the heat of the day. So I'm, I'm talking about wild game when it's hot outside and what you can do to preserve the meat and keep it from going bad. So the first thing that you can do is key. This is make a good shot. Um, when it comes to early season here in Missouri in September, you know, it can still be 100 degrees sometimes in, in the middle of September. And when it's like that, if you gut shoot a deer and you don't find that deer for 24 hours or so, that deer meat can be bad and can be spoiled. Um, you don't want to eat deer meat. Generally, if I do that, I can save the front half, but that back half, all that bacteria from the gut and everything like that has gotten into that meat and just made it bad. And it's just not worth the health, health risk of of eating that meat at that point. I hate to waste any deer meat. I don't want to hear about it in the comments because I don't do it if, unless I absolutely have to. But if you shoot a deer and it's 100 degrees outside and you shoot that deer in the gut and you don't find it for 24 hours, there's a good chance that that deer is no longer safe to eat and you probably shouldn't do it. So the number one thing you can do to help preserve your wild game meat in the heat is to make a good shot, an effective kill. Um, if it's like that, I hunt in the mornings only. I don't usually hunt in the evenings. And what I generally do is I really wait for that deer to come into comfort, my comfort zone 30 yards and in, and I wait for that perfect shot. I'm not pushing the envelope any at that point. I'm waiting for the exact perfect shot that I want in a nice open area. I'm not trying to squeeze it in or do anything like that. Doesn't always work out, but that can help you to make that effective shot. Um, so one of the things that you can do, what you need to do when you get a deer or a hog or something like that down into hot weather is you need to get that, that, that cavity as cool as you can, as fast as you can. So the first thing that I do is I field dress the animal as soon as it's possible. Um, for us, we have property where we can drag the deer to a certain area and field dress it there. Um, and then what I do is I go to the nearest convenience store and I put the deer, I put, I get a big bag of ice, I usually get two, and I put the first bag up into the chest cavity of the animal, and I put the second bag into, basically pushed right up against that, into the lower abdominal cavity of the animal from there to keep it nice and cool. Okay, so the next thing you can do, especially if you're out somewhere where you're camping and you're gonna hang the meat, is use something like this antimicrobial um, this is an antelope, but it works for deer. Antimicrobial deer antelope body bag. This will protect, it's basically like a cheesecloth is what it's basically like. It's just a big cheesecloth bag. And it's gonna keep the flies from getting to your animal. And then you can spray it down with this antimicrobial carcass spray and it's gonna keep uh, all the microbes from forming and keep your deer meat as fresh as possible in a situation like that. So I like to use this stuff, I keep it around. I keep it on hand for just in case something like that happens and I need to um, get that deer and or that hog, uh, uh, if I got to hang it or something like that, I'm going to keep it as fresh as possible and that will help do that. So if you, the next thing you do, you, the, this is all about keeping your deer cool. You have to keep that animal as cool as possible. Cold rooms are awesome. If you have a cold room, a cold room will work great. The other, the other thing that you can do is get that deer to a processor as fast as possible. If you're leaving the woods, take it straight to a processor if that's something that you do. If you're going to process your own, you're going to need either a cool room or you're going to need to do like I do. I have done two different things when I do a deer in the hot weather. Excuse me. Um, the first thing that I do is I get the deer home and I get it quartered and get it broke down into your primal, see the smallest section that you can get. I get all the quarters off of it, I get the back straps out of it, I get the neck cut off, I get the, the ribs and that area of the body 
um, cut down as small as I possibly can. And then you can do one of two things with it. If you have an old freezer, I've got an old refrigerator in my shop and I set it to as cold as the refrigerator side will possibly go. And I just wrap the deer meat at that point into Walmart bags and put it in that refrigerator. Um, not the freezer side, you don't want the deer frozen, you want it just to that point. My, my refrigerator will get a nice layer of ice on the outside of it. So I'm gonna put it in there and get it as cold as possible in that freezer. If you don't have a freezer, another thing that you can do is get a large ice chest and put your quarters down. I'm talking like I had like a 75 gallon uh, ice chest at one point before I had my refrigerator. It's just a huge igloo cooler. Um, and you put your, your deer, your carcass down in there, your primals down in there, and then you start filling that up with ice. And what you want here is you do not want a Yeti cooler in this situation. One, because a Yeti cooler that size would be expensive, but you want a basic run-of-the-mill crappy cooler. You want a, a shitty cooler, one of those, is what you want. And that's why I use the igloos, because the ice what the, what it does is you put the ice in there and as it melts it will actually run that water that frozen or that melted ice through your meat and it'll 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 run all that blood out of the meat and actually works really really well i set it in an area where it can drain i open a drain plug in it i put the ice down in there and the next day i come back and i put more ice in it the next day i come back and put more ice in it i leave it like that for three or four days and when it comes out the meat is remarkably clean and blood free because that ice has been melting and been cleaning all that blood away as you go. So that is one really good way to actually do this and keep your meat really fresh that way. Um, so if you have to hang it overnight and you can't quarter it, like you're, you're, you're the kind of guy who wants to take it to a processor and you can't get into a processor that day, um, leave the hide on. The hide can keep your, your fill it full of ice keep the hide on that will insulate the ice inside of it and keep that cold from the ice from getting out will also keep the bugs from really getting down into your meat and laying eggs and getting bacteria down in there so i leave the hide on it if i'm going to hang it overnight and get it to the processor the next day so the best thing you can do is make a quick effective shot but then you have to think about getting this animal cool so just to recap what i do is i get the animal out of the woods i put an ice a bag of ice in the chest cavity and the abdominal cavity. I get it home, I quarter it, I break it down into as small a primals as possible, and then I put it in the refrigerator and I put it in, or I put it into an ice chest with ice in it that's going to wash all that blood clean away. It's really important that you keep that meat as cool as possible. If you if you cannot do that, or you're the kind of guy who doesn't process your own meat take it to a processor and get it to them as soon as possible. But if you do gut shoot a deer and it has to set overnight into the next day in 100 degree heat, I would really caution you about eating that meat. I, I generally will not do it. If I've gut shot a deer in the morning and I, I find it in the afternoons, like I said, I would generally eat from the rib cage or from the sternum up and avoid anything from, from their back that has come in contact with that gut or that gut material in that heat it can be a really really bad thing so i hope this helps you uh when it comes to handling deer meat and wild game in the heat hope this helps you preserve your meat a little bit better if you like these videos and you find value in them you can subscribe below i checked the other day and we saw i saw that 98 percent of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed so if you would please do me a favor you find value in this video just hit that subscribe button it takes a second of your time and makes a world of difference to us it bumps up those numbers for subscribers and makes us you know know that people out there value what we're doing so please hit that subscribe button if you want to follow us on social media we're on instagram and facebook under ike's outdoors we appreciate you guys watching this and we will see you next time